Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Dominique Swinkles, and I'm the uh, moderator for today's session here. Um, I'm uh, one of the program committee members for HHL 2020, and I, I want to welcome you to this oral presentation. Uh, this is about cold chain for COVID-19 vaccine and the challenges and recommendations. Um, as you know, the chat is disabled, but you can use uh, the oral presentation Slack channel to share your thoughts and also network. Um, and then uh, use the Q&A to ask any questions throughout the presentation or after the presentation, um, you can unmute yourself and just ask the question live. So um, um, over to you, Yara, to show the presentation. Hello, thank you. I'm showing it right away. Hello everyone, myself Yogesh from National Cold Chain Resource Center, India. I'm here to present the sustainable cold chain required for COVID-19 response and the challenges involved and also the recommendations. Here would I like to take the opportunity of introducing our center. NCCRC is largely instrumental in supporting the Government of India in effective implementation of immunization program across the country. The key mandates it holds is capacity building, technical support, undertaking the assessment and studies related to the cold chain, newer technologies, integrations, innovations, and also one of the prime mandate is establishing the cold chain equipment laboratory for its performance testing. Center also works beyond the immunization for capacity building of the medical professionals in repair and maintenance of the neonatal equipments, also handling the medical equipments. So this is all about the center, yet long way to go. Now in response to the COVID-19, as we know, the entire world over globe actually suffering from this deadly pandemic scenario and to have some preventive measures research is in progress to introduce vaccines and the covid 19 vaccine trials is now entering a defining stage uh, but still a wide range of issues yet needs to be addressed which also includes the logistics Delivering the COVID-19 vaccines, maintaining its potency and safety will now be the mission of the century over the globe. And as we know that vaccine must be handled and it must be transported following the national international regulatory norms in a controlled temperature, in a controlled environment, you can say, or even ensuring the quality, potency and safety. With valid distribution process, Okay, so that there is no negative impact on its efficacy, on its potency, on, on its safety. So you require the valid distribution process. Again, just to link up the ideas, I have one slide which showing the cold chain which is actually required under a routine immunization. Basically, basically five level storages are there. One is primary which is actually the national level store. Another one, the sub-national store. Under sub-national, it comes your state, or you can say the provenance vaccine store, and the regional vaccine store, also called as the intermediate vaccine stores. Then the district vaccine store, and last is the coaching point. In between, the vaccine is getting transport by the use of the refitter vehicle, and onwards, the sub-national store, most commonly used is of the insulated vaccine store. So here we all know that what is the storage temperature? What is the transportation temperature required? Okay, what is the duration of storage? So we know because the established system is in place. 
but when it comes to the covid 19 there are challenges okay the first challenge you will come across that number of beneficiaries it means the target population in if you consider the immunization in the routine way the routine immunization which requires for the child and pregnant woman it covers or it requires only 4 to 5% of the total population but now in case of covid 19 almost you have to cover the entire population which is a very huge challenge now when you talk about the infrastructure and supply chain see there is a unreliable grid power supply which is uh, you can say it's a regular sort of issue everywhere everywhere in the world you can say over the globe and even cooling equipment infrastructure see in many countries in many developing countries even the cold chain segment is not so strong it is under still under developing stage the temperature monitoring mechanism technology is not so advanced okay so there are the lack of temperature sensitive services now another big challenge right now is what is the temperature requirement what is the temperature requirement for the covid nineteen vaccine don't know what is the temperature requirement to make storage during transportation even prior to use of utilization no answer okay uncertainties are involved and still confusions are there what is the type of vaccine what is its nature whether it is nasal spray whether it is rna vest or something else still the picture is confusing many unknown parameters are there like number of doses per vial temperature sensitivity for face sensitivity for heat sensitivity what is the actually the exposure or how it when it get damaged the shelf life of that vaccine many things need to right now so you can say it is unanswerable uncertainty is are involved nobody can predict nothing so this is the scenario however the scale of the activity will be vast and the cold chain facilities required is must challenges are still there and in terms of the cold chain space you cannot predict the storage capacity as you don't know about the manufacturing capacity also storage capacity versus utilization rate you need to predict even versus the transportation capacity and desired temperature what to do exactly whether to store more or to transport more depends on the utilization is there any possibility for the use of existing infrastructure or new setup is required and if required then at what scale see the challenge is not only the technology challenge not only the programmatic challenges not only the planning challenges but it also comes to the clinical challenges what about the efi if suppose something goes wrong after immunization if there is a, after immunization there is a adverse effect what will be the response from media so there is a definite impact and that will be the potential impact on the utilization however if we want to build a sustainable and resilient cold chain for the covid-19 vaccine we need to have or we need to take a rapid assessment rapid assessment for for the existing temperature control facility and equipment in terms of maximizing its use or repurposing of the existing infrastructure needed because it may be a cost saving model it may be it may prove the economic model or it may somewhat it may serve the purpose at least at, in the initial stages as it will give some breathing time to introduce the newer cold chain setup and in this assessment what exactly needed 
needed addressing for the fixed infrastructure like the storage warehouses the building infrastructure the supply chain logistics infrastructure it also includes the transportation up to last mile the transport infrastructure whether the country is using the refer vehicle whether we are using the internet vaccine van or what could be the best I have to go to for the passive containers or the active refrigeration so here the think tank now it is time to start over efficient supply chain must in place so now the requirement is to develop the cold chain action plan and not only the cold chain action plan but with the rational distribution system and the sustainable delivery mechanism till the last mile because the last mile is very difficult if you think about the urban areas you can do something you can arrange something or whatever you can many alternate options are there but what about the rural what about the village hard to reach area so think up to that level that is needed again while building the sustainable cold chain don't forget about the novel technologies the opportunities are there which knocking you at all now and go for the smart and energy efficient warehouses with environment friendly solutions try to introduce the new generation cold chain equipment energy saving measures are very important even and the grid power in the rural areas you know very well so solar power cold chain equipment you may go for the option is there long term hold over period which will be required in the future so why not passive passive cold chain is also a very good option use the active refrigeration in transportation right now we are not actually it we are using a passive container or insulated containers it's okay fine but now there is a need of an hour we need active refrigeration because maybe utilization rate may be more as compared to routine refrigeration you may go for the cold chain electric vehicle also where the energy saving measures are well at rest but this required some information system telematics iot based solutions which actually which actually capture the real time data for the temperature and even for the vaccine logistic management and actually the stocking of vaccine at every level is very very important and last but not least human resource trained human resource will be required in the area of the cold chain and vaccine logistic management in the area of the repair and maintenance of the cold chain equipment handling the cold chain and even most importantly the vaccines which is the time and temperature sensitive and don't forget about the corona the pandemic scenario the deadly pandemic scenario so work plus safety is equally important equally equally important so training is needed also for the work plus safety so here all about as you know the safety is as simple as abc always be careful the message is let us unite for the noble cause thank you thank you thanks a lot Thank you so much. This is a great presentation. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can either unmute yourself and post them right now or add them to the Q&A um, and they can be um, answered. So over to you.
everyone. This is Yarit from the support. If you have any questions, you can raise your hands and I can unmute you uh, for you to ask your questions live. I see some questions coming up. Um, the first one is, what new technologies are you most excited about in using to improve the cold chain? Yogesh, would you like to answer that first question I just asked? asked? Hello, ma'am. Uh, am I audible? Hello? Yes, Hello. we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, great, great, great. Actually, see, in uh, if you talk about the technology, so there are uh, two, three technologies are occurring right now. The new generation equipments are there. There, there is uh, freezing prevention also is, has been taken care of. But right now, if you talk about the COVID-19 vaccine, we don't predict the... Uh, surface temperature for the COVID-19. So as long as uh, the requirement is not very clearly defined, uh, the technology even also we cannot suggest right now, but solar powered equipments and the passive cooling devices, even the uh, if you consider the refrigeration vehicles, so run the refrigeration vehicle on the solar power. It, this is the, actually the key areas where we can concentrate in the future. Yes, it is. There's another question uh, from Nico. Uh, compared to the 4.5% 4, 4 pregnant and children, what is the percentage elderly, let's say above 65? See, this is actually, this is the target population I'm seeing about. Because see, if you going to vaccinate, uh, you will not discriminate here whether it's the elder or children or whatever it may be. The COVID-19 vaccine obviously will be for all. So, but uh, the thing is, uh, if uh, vaccination through the rotation, then only ac according to the supply and demand, the percentage will vary. Otherwise, absolutely, it will be 100% only. You cannot, and you cannot yeah, yeah, you yeah. cannot discriminate here in any, any percentage for what percentage will be required. Well, I'm talking about the immunization percentage because of actually. Uh, we do have the analysis, we do have the studies that according to the entire population, we have to take what is the uh, target population for our uh, immunization target. So there, is, there are some formulas, we have to follow that also. But in case the COVID-19 vaccines, definitely we have to go for all. That's good to hear. Um, there's one more question. What are the plans in terms of capacity building that too will have to be done predominantly virtually. Yeah, definitely. Capacity building is very much required because uh, as we experienced, even for the uh, regular cold chain, there is, uh, the people are lagging behind the technology. Technology is advancing and people are lagging behind. People don't know how the smart warehouses, the, actually I'm talking about the technicians. So the, the area are there where we need to have some orientation on the newer technologies for the technicians. So technicians for the orientation of the newer technology and for the handlers for handling the vaccines also, even the coaching equipment also. So a huge scope is there for trained all our HR in every level, for at managerial level, at mid-level managers, for the health workers, for technicians. So huge scope is there for everywhere. In COVID-19 vaccine, again, the equipment will be different. If, we were, if you are talking about the equipment that are coming or the vaccine which is coming, which requires the temperature of ultra freeze, people don't know how to operate the cascade equipment because for minus 80, minus 80 degrees centigrade, minus 60 degrees centigrade, this temperature is not achievable with the single compressor technology and with the equipment which you are irregularly using. Technology will be different than obviously the training will be required to all the technical personnel involved for the repair maintenance of this equipment. Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you, Yugesh. Um, there is a question here from uh, Nick, who I'm going to allow you to, to talk right now. Yeah. There you go, Nick. You can you can ask your question live. Great, uh, Yugesh. Thank you again for the wonderful presentation. Um, I actually wanted thank to have you. a follow up question on on um, the the topic you were just talking about, an ultra cold freezers. Um, I'm curious. You know, I was uh, just talking to a couple. Um, fridge manufacturers um, okay, in, uh, across okay. the world. And great, great. They, you know, they, there, there's this question around whether we're gonna have two to eight or whether we're gonna have ultra low, uh, ultra cold uh, vaccines that we're gonna need to distribute. Um, and if we do have to have like that negative 80 um, freezer, ultra cold freezer, um, they're really worried. Basically, I think a lot of people are uncertain whether it's gonna be two to eight or um, you know, negative 80. Um, and whether the supply chains are going to be ready for that. Um, so I, my, my question to you is, um, how are you prepared for um, whether it's going to be two to eight or whether it's gonna be negative 80, the ultra low? Um, and um, you know, how, you know, in, in addition to capacity building, are you guys looking to potentially buy new fridges or centralized distribution? Um, what strategies you have to kind of prepare for uh, either scenario? Great, great. Actually, this is the only what I'm the objective of the presentation is because uh, we are very uncertain about the temperature requirements for the COVID-19 vaccines. Okay, right now we are dealing with the only 2 to 8 and 15, minus 15 to minus 20 because which is the requirement of the, your routine immunization vaccine. But if you talk about the COVID-19 vaccine, uh, some manufacturers are claiming that the vaccine will come with the plus temperature. Some manufacturers are claiming that it will come with the minus temperature. But if, again, I'm saying, if the temperature requirement is very ultra low for ultra freezing equipment, so then uh, at least in the developing countries, because the European countries and the American countries, they can cope up with the situation immediately. But for the developing countries, like in Africa, even the Asian countries, definitely the time will be required to refurbish the complete cold chain and again the same thing if you making some change drastically the people will not absorb that so you need to uh, technological changes you need to have uh, gradual movements for this and definitely uh, if uh, something getting changed drastically so we are not in a place to absorb the this uh, abrupt change or the drastic change so policies are there definitely policies are there uh, many countries are actually now preparing to have a different cold chain for the COVID-19 vaccines. They are uh, actually in the planning to procure some new cold storages. But again, for the last deliverables, we need to have the complete specification in the hand at what is the exact requirement so that we can proceed accordingly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. If you have any other questions, please do um, either raise your hand or write them in the, the Q&A. Thank you. I think, ma'am, actually, let them uh, allow time to write in the Slack, so I will answer all the questions. Okay, also I will try to answer all the questions. Yeah, sure, that sounds fine with me. We have yeah. uh, we have another half an hour. <laughs> okay, great, great, great. great. Oh, then, wait, then, fine. Fine. then fine, then fine, then fine. If we are running behind the schedule, then you can conclude, or if your it is time it is there, then we can stay here only. We'll stay on a few more minutes, see if there's more questions. Otherwise, we we'll... won't. <laughs>
Okay, so we have one more question for you, Yogesh. Um, is yeah. there any thought around roping in other industries, which also have their own equipment and supply chain management, which needs cold chain? Like for instance, ice cream companies. Uh, I beg your pardon, actually I couldn't, I didn't understand this question properly. Please, please, please repeat this question. Sure. Um, yeah. Is there any thought around roping in other industries which also have their own equipment and supply chain management. Oh, oh, oh. I, I got it. Like yeah, I got it. I, yeah. got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. See, uh, many, many uh, key players are there actually over the globe also. Even I can, uh, even I can, uh, if uh, memorize or reflect, I can name also that Thermo King is there. They maintain the cold chain, their own cold chain. Uh, if I uh, take some and other part of the countries, then some other uh, companies, graphic companies, they are also owning the same cold chain. But in our government sector, what it does actually, generally, uh, as it is related to the vaccination part, so hiring the services is not actually very recommended in our area. Okay, so even for us, COVID 19 also, uh, there are very rare chances that any country is going to hire this kind of services because the country is now is having capacity. The people are well trained here actually and they know how to handle the cold chain. Only the things need is just to orient them for the change, for the change of the uh, in the management perspective also and from the technical perspective also. Companies are definitely there who are managing their cold chain for the private sectors. They are there, definitely. But again, but again, I'm very doubtful for the that minus 60 and minus 80 because uh, at story level it's okay, but for transportation, it is a huge challenge. Huge challenge. Thank you, Yogesh. Yeah. Well, I would say if there's no more questions, um, you can either continue the conversation on Slack or, or get get in contact with Yogesh directly. Um, and then we can we can end the session. So thank you very much. Very much appreciate Thanks. your attendance and the presentation. Thank you. Oh, I thank see. You. Wait, so I see one more question. There we go. <laughs> Nick is please, asking please. one more question. Um, okay, fine, fine. Welcome, welcome, Nick. Here, I'll ask a more biased question given my background. Drone technology has shown that they can be really effective in simplifying chains and maintaining a robust cold chain. Delivering vaccines on demand with limited wastage. What do you see as the potential for this technology, for drone technology? Okay, I, okay. This is actually the no, I don't know. Drone, drone. See, drone technology is actually also I mean say this has justified technology. I'm not uh, uh, have a definite comment on this, but because uh, right now in our cold chain, uh, somewhere it is used where the access is very difficult and where actually you cannot transport the vehicle vaccination through the road and another by another mode so drone throw is great okay wastage also less because it is, it is exactly the supply is according to the demand so uh, the percentage wastage is very very less but again the same thing actually the countries which uh, under development or not in advance in so much advance for this uh, segment, they will definitely face the challenge while using this drone technology because though it is uh, proven, but uh, its scaling is very difficult for for uh, in the every area and for every country. But definitely, I, I, I agree with the Nick also that uh, best percentage will be definitely less with this kind of technologies. Even even uh, I am saying when the coordinating vaccine is there. So you can have less storage time, but you can have, as the utilization rate is very high, so you just use the river vehicles, which is uh, which can maintain the desired temperature. You go to the campaign mode in the campaign and just utilize the hardware, whatever vaccine. So again, the storage will be less, the energy consumption will be less. So you can have a continuous evolving uh, vaccination mode by using the refer vehicles so that is also one plus point so you can go for the use of the refer vehicles so refer vehicle use definitely will be required more in the future as compared to today's scenario with the COVID-19.
Yeah, thank you for that. Um, any other questions? If not, let's end the session. So thank you again. Uh, I hope you. everyone has a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.